Hey guys, it's Dan here with a new video, and today we're going to be making this. So this is the quantum helmet that they have in the Avengers Endgame. It's their time travel suit. Multiple people wear it, so it's not specific for one person. So we're going to be making this. This is the files from DO3D, and I'm going to link the files I have down so you can get it yourself if you want to. It's a paid thing, uh, so you're going to have to buy it. So I have all this stuff in here. It lights up. It's got foam. It's all shiny. Let's get into the build. Alright, so we have this all printed out. And it comes in two different pieces. I printed it with pretty much no supports on the inside. Except for like a couple pieces. You can see in some videos if I have any time lapse it's posted. <laughs> the supports failed on the back anyways, and I had like spaghetti all around it and actually the like, video cut as it was printing, that was pretty funny. But we're gonna be taking files like this, and we're gonna just be tacking all the surfaces and making them all smooth and clean and all that stuff. Uh, the one thing that I will say is in the past like few years of printing stuff, if I printed this when I first started printing, on my first machine, the cure profile for supports would have been a nightmare to remove, and the supports remove so easily now, so that's really good. Alright, let's get into filing all this, and I'm going to come back with this pretty smooth. I'm going to probably be sanding and using acetone to smooth it out, because this plastic I use is PLA that's slightly responsive to acetone. I'll have more information about that plastic in the description below. Alright. Filing and sanding. Priming. Filing. Filing. Sanding. Oh, sanding. Filing. Sanding. I'm still sanding. Why am I still sanding? I'm still sanding. I'm still sanding. Yeah, 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 I'm still sanding. Yeah, 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 I'm still sanding. Yeah, 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 I'm still sanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why am I still sanding? <laughs> we have all the layers of primer on. You've seen different videos where I've shown you how I do primer and all that stuff. To get the shiny finish, you Make sure that you sand it lightly and then make it all smooth, but then the last coat you're going to take a steel wool and polish it out. And make sure you get rid of all things that are like super crunchy looking and then you're going to take a cotton like t-shirt or well, that's what I used and then polish it out. So after you get all that, then I'm going to just uh, paint it. So you guys don't have to see me paint. That's one of those things that sort of takes a lot of time for nothing that really shows anything. So we're going to come back with the painted and then I'll show you how I'm going to add detail to the other parts. For the red parts, I am going to try to do a vinyl. I found some at a vinyl store. Mine's called Vinyl Fun. It's near me. You look around, see if you have any vinyl shops near you. But this first one's metallic and this other one's not. This one stretches more and the people at the store recommended I probably should try this just in case this one doesn't work because this one doesn't stretch quite as much as the Orcal 651 does. And the downside of this having some texture on it that looks like carbon fiber is pretty much the only carbon fiber stuff I could find was for cars and it's uh, $20 at a place for this when the metallic is like three dollars and this is like 75 cents so I mean that's 12 by 12 so the reds are 12 by 12 this is 12 by 36 it's more but it's uh, a very small amount of carbon fiber that I'm going to be using on it and I hope it looks good so I'm not going to struggle trying to film myself doing this I'm going to go through all the steps and tell you what I think does and doesn't work afterwards. I have this little switch on this and it goes to some LEDs that go to some LEDs 
I go to some LEDs. So all that is with some soldering and heat shrink. When you're soldering and you want heat shrink to go over it, you want to make sure you have little like round smooth blobs and everything looks great so that way it doesn't poke and puncture and if you're going to heat shrink uh, i heat it up with a heat gun and then let it conform mainly and then let it cool down a little bit and then pinch it with my fingers before it gets too cold and that way it like sort of shapes around everything and then i just go down the line so let's turn this on all right the lights work Okay, so I'm going to glue this and some foam into the helmet, and then I'll show you the results. We have the lights and the foam all installed, and it's all glued in. But before I show you all that, this gunmetal gray, it looks really good, but you see down here? It scratches easily, comes off with like the little bit of like touch with like a moist hand. It's not... Not really that good at being like a, you know, strong paint. So I'm going to clear coat it. That means I'm gonna to have to mask everything off again, paint some spots that I have to touch up and do all that clear coating. But then this foil looks really good on the back, the red. Uh, on the front, it looks a little weird. I think it looks good from like cosplay perspectives from like far away, like two feet or more, but like up close, it looks a little funny. Uh, I'm gonna take it off, put it on a piece of wax paper while I let myself mask this up and paint the clear coat on the gunmetal. I'm going to think if I want to try to figure out how to do a really nice shiny metallic red paint or not. Uh, it'll still be on the wax paper, I'll put it on afterwards if it still sticks. If it still looks good enough then I'll keep it on there until I figure out how to get red paint that is shiny metallic. If not. Then I'll just keep the foil on. So the vinyl that's on the wax paper is what I was using. And you can see it has really good reflectivity. But if you look closely down here, it crinkles and wrinkles and sort of just doesn't have enough adhesive and holding power for it to like stick to like curves. It sort of looks weird. If you look over here, you'll see this top one and this bottom one are two pieces of tape that are spray painted with clear red. So this tape is aluminum and this tape is copper it's actually aluminum tape like for ducting and the copper tape is used on guitars for like grounding and making everything so that it doesn't have any interference but the thing is this copper tape even though the hue i think the hue of the copper looks slightly darker and a little bit better it's <laughs> sort of expensive tape and uh the backing of it is like conductive so it's like made specifically for like doing stuff that's on guitars and the aluminum tape sort of cheap uh, so I'm going to use aluminum and I'm going to trace this shape out onto the aluminum that I painted and put it all on. The thing is I'm using this tape versus this tape because this stuff is made to like stick to stuff and it sticks really well. Both of these stick really well and they also fold easily. The plasticky part of this doesn't really fold all that easily and it's good for like big smooth curves. I'm gonna keep them on the back half of the helmet where it's a big smooth curve, but I'm going to use this for the parts that have a lots of detail uh, in the curves. All right, so you can see that they relatively look pretty similar. On camera, they look a little different, but in person, they look pretty similar. And it holds the shape, it curves really well, and it looks really nice, and it didn't like tarnish or rip or anything like that, so that's good. And this stuff still, it's shinier, but when you're standing right here and looking at it, you can't really tell that they're different and they look like cohesive enough that I'm fine with keeping this on there and replacing this with this one. So let's get the lens on and then this thing should pretty much be done. Ooh, one more thing to note. This is two different pieces because the tape doesn't fit this size. So I started with the bottom piece and then at this seam here, you can't tell, but this aluminum tape works really well for hiding seams. I put uh, one piece from here and one piece from here and it just layers on that crease down there. You can't tell, so that's great. Okay, for those wondering, I'm using 3M aluminum tape. I'm using Testers spray enamel. It is clear red as the cap indicates. And when you 
once this shape, like any, if you put a piece of tape onto the original helmet and trace it out and then pull it off, you want to put it onto the paper backing side and cut it out. And since the helmet is mirrored on both sides, you're gonna use the left for the right and the right for the left. So if this goes, uh, I think this goes like this. So this goes on this side of the helmet, <laughs> then I'm going to put it on the other side of the helmet. And when I cut it out, it's gonna be shaped like this on the right side because that's just how mirroring works. You guys understand things. Flip it around, flip it around. Make sure you cut one of each side so you don't have two lefts or two rights. This is the shape of the lens of the file that you get. Uh, I sanded all the edges down, made it look all good. I laid some tape onto it and then laid it out flat, put it on a piece of paper for the inside and for the outside. When these are laid together, they're not actually the same size or shape because this has three dimensions in it and it's thick. So this side is gonna be slightly different than this side. If you want to make a lens that is thin, you would probably use the inside of the curve. If you're going to make a lens that is thick, so like if this was the lens, then you probably wanna use the outside of the curve because if you use the outside of the curve, it's gonna match the shape of this better. If you use the inside of the curve, it's gonna match the shape of a really thin piece of thing better. So that's something to put your mind to if you're gonna do this. For the lens, I originally had all these plans and thoughts of making it removable and I had this material that was really good. I recorded the whole segment. It didn't work out as I thought. So I'm going to be using this stuff to hold the lens on. It works really well and it's the right color. I needed it to be a black or a dark gray. And I already know that this stuff works really well because I used to repair electronics and this stuff just, it holds, it actually does stuff. So this is going to actually hold the lens on really well and it's the right color. For the lens, I'm going to, oh, you can't really see. So I'm going to use one of those lenses that you would get for a mask that we would get at the beginning of COVID, you know, like how they would have the face shields. So this is a face shield a piece of plastic. It has the little thin plastic layer on still. I'm going to cut it out at the shape of this. And once I have this shape cut out, I'm going to just, you know, push it into the tape and it should look good. One other thing about using face shield plastic is it's made for people to look through. So it's optically clear and it's not going to have any kind of distortions in it that make it super weird because it's made to be curved and still see-through. So if you're looking for a sheet of plastic that you want to use, uh, you better look for something like this first because this is going to be easier for you to see through without it being all weird looking. All right, so this was a really fun build. It was really cool to make and I really like how it looks. I'm going to be wearing this to the Comic Cons that are going on this year and I'm going to have to do something about the sound because one thing I didn't touch on when you're wearing this, it's sort of like an echo chamber on the inside and people don't hear you too well. I'll deal with it. So other than that, this looks great and I'm going to do something with a suit next. Uh, I have plans eventually to make a full suit uh, and all that stuff. I don't have enough time to do that right now. So I am just going to take a suit that you get off of like Amazon or something like that. I'm going to like, just like change some stuff in case it doesn't fit your hands or something like that. If anything like that, I'll make a video. So we have videos all over here where you can see other stuff and you have links over here in case you want to click on those links. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video.